there's been a lot of talk very recently, or definitely over the last several years, about the idea of intelligent design and, and how it compares to evolution. Intelligent design. And my goal in this video isn't to kind of enter into that discussion, or it's actually turned into an argument in most circles, but really to make my best attempt to kind of, to kind of reconcile the, the notions. So the idea behind intelligent design is really, you know, there are some things that we see in our world that are just so amazing that it, it seems hard to believe that it could be that it could be the product of a set of random processes. You know, and, and the example that tends to be given is is the human eye, which truly is an awe inspiring device. Uh, whatever uh, you could call it, an organ or a machine, whatever you want to call it. it. I mean, it does all of these amazing things. It can focus at different lengths. You have, you know, it, it brings the, eye, the the light into focus at just the right spot, and then you have your 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 retinal nerves, and you have two eyes, and so you can see in stereoscopic vision, and you can see in colors, and then you can adjust it adjust to light and dark. So the human eye truly is awe-inspiring, and the argument uh, tends to go that look, how can this be created from random processes? And I'm not the goal of this isn't to kind of trace the evolution of the eye, but I'll do a little side note here that evolution is and natural selection, and I like the word natural selection more because it's not talking about a active process, natural selection is, act, is acting over eons and eons of time. And we do see evidence in our world of kind of a progression of different types of eyes. In fact, uh, all evidence shows that the human eye isn't, it is not perfect. It's not perfect and that there is variation. There is variation. I mean, we all know some of us are nearsighted, some are farsighted. We have astigmatisms. It degenerates over time. People generate cataracts. There's a whole set of things that can go wrong with the human eye. And I'm not, I'm not using that as a rebuttal, but I'm just showing you that, th that there is variation, even in what I believe is truly an amazing, an amazing piece of biology. And even if you go outside of the human world, there's obviously a huge spectrum of eyes. You have fish at the bottom of the ocean that have eyes that are really just light sensors that barely can you know maybe tell you and some insects are like this whether there's some light or some heat around nothing really more than that and at the other end of the spectrum far better than humans you have certain birds and some certain type of nocturnal creatures where they can see in the dark you know maybe you have a certain you know cats can Actually, all all cats have have these reflective material in their eye that allows them much better night vision. So in that way, they're superior to human, and they can see just as good as humans during the daytime. You have certain birds who can see with far more visual clarity at far better distances than humans can. So there is no perfect eye. So I'll go to a little bit of a theological argument here. And for those of you who watch my videos, you know that I'm I'm one to stray away from theological arguments. Although I might eventually do a whole philosophy pay playlist. But it's, I, I want to be very careful not to uh, offend anyone's sensibilities, because that truly, truly, truly is not is not my intention. But, but the whole point I want to make is that look, if you believe in a god, and I, I won't take sides on that argument in this video right here, it's it, it 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 it's it's to some degree I would say almost disparaging of an all-powerful being to say that this this human eye it kind of gives too much importance to us as individuals. I always think that religion, um, it, it's, it's, and actually science, it, it, actually everything, I mean, we should be humble in our lives. And you know, there should be the realization that we as humans really, this isn't perfection. And to imply that this is the best that a, 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 a kind of a, a, a perfect entity or an all-powerful entity could produce, I think is a little actually disparaging of it. I'll, I'll give you another example. I'll give you another example, and I'll put my engineering hat on here. And once again, I want to be very clear. My my goal isn't in this video to say, oh, you know, look, hey, you know, evolution, random processes, that by itself, you know, there's there's no God, and you know, you just have to live with. No, that's not my point. I'm actually making the opposite argument, that 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 it, a belief in God would not point to a God who a, a, a belief in a universal, all-powerful God would not point to a God who designs the particular who designs each particular and even more the imperfections that we see around us would uh, you know and, and especially because we see variation and they're being selected for I mean we can't just focus on the eye we would have to focus on viruses and cancers and it would have to speak to a god that is designing uh, 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 you know one off every version of every uh, you know every sequence of DNA that we see because what is you know what if someone talks about designing an eye we know that the eye is the byproduct of DNA and we know that DNA is a sequence of 
of of of of base pairs, you know, A T G C A, and you know, billions and billions of them. And so when we talk about design, we would be talking literally about designing this sequence. And we even know that a lot of the sequence, there's some noise in there. We know that a lot of it comes from primitive viruses deep in our past. So the argument I'm making here is that if, uh, it, 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 in order to give credit to the all-powerful, in order to give to credit to the all-powerful, at least to my mind, a system that comes from very simple and elegant basic ideas, simple and elegant basic ideas, basic ideas like natural selection and variations uh, that you know in, in our DNA there those we call those mutations but an idea and the laws of physics and chemistry and and those in, from that simple and elegant basic ideas for complexity to emerge for complexity to emerge so this is one idea and this is what really evolution speaks to that look there's our universe is this profound is this profound world this profound uh, environment where from these very basic simple beautiful ideas we have this complexity and the structure that is truly 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 awe-inspiring this is in my mind what evolution speaks to and in my mind even as an engineer this speaks to a a higher form of design this speaks to a more profound design more profound design so all my this this whole video the whole argument is that if if one does believe in a god and you know I I'm not going to take sides in that in this video but if it, that that and a, a god that it, that speaks to beauty and elegance and and is 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 infinitely powerful then this 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 idea of the laws of physics and chemistry and natural selection which is really i mean you know when i talked about natural selection in the last video it was really i think you would find it it was a bit of it was a bit of common sense that this is a very profound design and it speaks it speaks to the art of the designer as opposed to designing each of these entities one off and what's even more profound about the design is that it's adaptive it does it's uh, if if there's if there's environmental stress then the then the other variations survive more frequently so and and so it's never changing that perfection that no instance can ever be pointed to and say this this is the the highest point that this design can reach that is always i won't want to say getting better it's always getting more suited to its environment as it changes and that to me is a better design. And now, now you know, just following up on that, and I want to be very clear: this whole idea is to kind of um, raise the standard of what we expect out of design. It's to kind of show other points or other places in our in the scientific or mathematical world where this does emerge. And the best example I see of that is is with fractals. I'm a lot of y'all might have seen the this is the Mandelbrot set, very famous set of fractals. It's immensely complex. In fact, you can keep zooming in on the Mandelbrot set at any point. And when you zoom it out, it becomes infinitely complex. And you can explore it in indefinitely. But the beauty of it, the true beauty of it, is all of this can be described by one equation, one almost shockingly simple equation. And that's this. Z, the, the next z is equal to the z before it squared plus 1. And you're like, say, how, you know, you start talking about intelligent design and evolution and all of that. What is this, you know, what, why are you all of a sudden breaking into fractals? And what I'm, the point I'm trying to make here is that there's, if, if, if I had two designers and one set out to go and paint this exact particular fractal and say, oh, you know, I'm going to make this brown and I'm going to make this blue and I'm going to make this a circle with other circles. And you would say, this is a, this is an amazing painter. For example, if before people knew if you were to, you know, if you were to go to someone uh, 300 years ago and you were to show them this, you would say they would say that this is the finest uh, design that anyone might have ever been able to devise because it's so infinitely complex. But now we know that this can be completely described by this simple equation, literally. For those of you who are interested. All they're doing, this is the complex plane, and they're taking, they're starting at zero. Or let me actually not plus one, plus c. Let me make that very clear. This is the equation plus c. There, so for every point on the complex plane, you put that point in for the number for c, and then you start with zero, 
And you keep doing this. So you say 0 squared plus that number, that complex number is equal to that. And then you put that in here, and then you do that number squared plus that complex number, and you do it again. You do it over and over and over. So it turns out that some numbers don't go to infinity, and those numbers are in black. They're considered part of the Mandelbrot set. And then the numbers that do go to infinity, you, you, as you iterate on this formula, you color it based on how fast it goes to infinity. And it creates this enormous, I mean, this, this infinitely beautiful and complex pattern. Now, if you were to say, what is a more profound design? And you could ask any engineer this. In my mind, this is the most profound design. Because it's, it's, it's simple and elegant, but it describes something of infinite complexity. Infinite complexity. It's not just focused on the particular. It's focused on kind of the meta level. It's focused on creating kind of just the idea that of which this is just an example. So anyway, this is probably my most, you know, uh, my my video where I I, I I I steer most away from kind of the the science of it all, and I maybe I focus a little bit more on the, the slightly metaphysical or the awe-inspiring. But my whole point here is to really throw out my little idea of how you can reconcile these notions that evolution, the randomness of it, does not speak to a kind of a a godless universe. Although I'm not going to take sides on that, it speaks to a a more profound God in my mind. So anyway, uh, forgive me for taking my my. Uh, my uh, liberties, and, and I, I want to make it very clear, I don't want to offend anyone's sensibilities, but I really just wanted to throw this idea out there.